Hi, Jen. How's it going? Hi. How are you? I'm good. How's it going? It is going. It looks like it's going to rain today, so we can hope that we're not going to get wet. Okay. All right. I'm You're inside. inside then. Yeah. You're inside. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. It's raining here, but I'm inside, so it's okay. Okay. All so right. Today we're going to talk. Today we're going to talk about chakras, um, but before we do that, we'll do a quick introduction in case you don't know who we are. This is Jen, and Jen is the, uh, correct me here, but it's Just One Crazy Mama is your page, and she also has a blog, correct? Yeah, on that page, yep. So I okay. run a blog, um, and it's basically everything from wellness to parenting to parenting somebody who's unwell to parenting if you're not well um tips tricks the way life is going right now it's kind of a a mishmash bag of whatever's i feel like writing about or doing a video about so um like the one that's coming up is about somebody i encountered who is struggling and how to converse with them without sounding like a jerk or ignorant. And I know a lot of people struggle with learning how to talk to somebody who's, who's maybe not well. So, um, and I've done some about just COVID and how we're all trying very hard to deal, but <laughs> how it works and, and it's just kind of a all in kind of blog. Yeah, and from what I've seen of your page, um, it's a very authentic piece about whatever you're going through, yeah. kind of in that moment, good days, bad days, um, really acceptance and wholeness. Um, yeah. So very, very eclectic, but um, that holistic whole approach. Um, so yeah. Yep. And I'm Ashley, I run a Reiki business here at Soul Purpose. And yeah, if you don't know what that is, um, you can check out my website at soulpurposereiki.com um, or pop, pop a couple of questions in below and I'm happy to um, reach out to anybody who wants to know more. So yeah, like I said before, we're going to talk about chakras today. Um, so Jen, if you want to begin that what um, and what that looks like, um, you've had some kind of exposure to the chakras. Um, if you want to start us off, that's good. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to do a, a quick overview of them all. And we're going to focus on where the chakra is in your body, which would be Ashley, and where the oil is, or the oil that corresponds with it, which would be more um, my specialty, part, I guess. Yeah. So um, our first chakra is the root chakra, which... Um, I find is one of the most pertinent. Would you agree? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So the root chakra, um, if you're thinking of a tree, it's the roots of the tree. So it's where we um, dig into the ground. It makes us feel safe. It makes us feel connected. Um, and it's very much, when you think of that tree, if you have two trees side by side, one with a really good root system, and one with kind of a crappy root system, that same storm coming at both of those trees, the tree with the stronger root system is going to weather that storm so much better. Mm -hmm. Same with us in life. If we are grounded, if we are rooted, we, whatever life's challenges, whatever that storm is, we're going to be able to kind of, yeah, it might sway us, but it's not going to tip us right over. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of that connection there. The root and that's chakra is typically so when you're meditating that's why typically most meditations try to get you to envision the roots to ground you right yes because okay. being grounded is we all need that and we we naturally should be at the same vibration or magnet magnetism magnetism <laughs> of the earth but we wear shoes we don't interact with the earth as much as we used to mm -hmm. so we it's easy for us to get ungrounded so many of us don't um don't ever actually touch the earth you go to work you have shoes on you come home you're in your house those kinds of things whereas um children and people gardeners people who are interacting with the dirt 
Um, and that's why summer is often a time when people feel better. Mm -hmm. Obviously the sunshine, warmer weather, longer days, but also that's the time when we get our feet in the water. It's when we walk outside in our bare toes. It's when we are gardening and pulling weeds and all of those things. It is very therapeutic, but it's also because it's bringing our magnetism to the same level of the earth, which is what we're meant to be at. Perfect. So yeah. So the essential oil, um, coincidentally or not, I'm not sure. I'm assuming somebody somewhere has figured this all out, but it's cedar wood. So it's kind of works in with the tree um, theory that you, it's bringing the earth to you um, in an essential oil as well. So then our next one is the sacral chakra. Perfect. I'm just going to pop us back because I forgot to say where it was. The root chakra is actually in the pelvis and it's red in color. Right. And when it's open, same with all the other chakras, it's going to be a clockwise spinning disc is what you can envision. So it's a red spinning disc in the pelvis is the root chakra. Perfect. And yeah. Okay. Now the sacral. Sacral chakra is just below the belly button and it is an orange spinning disc. And that is fertility, creativity, and relationships. Um, obviously kind of that prominent relationship, whatever that looks like for you, um, husband, wife, partner, um, that's kind of where that often sits because there is that sexual piece, but it is also relationships in general. Um, so it's not just only that sexual piece, but that's the kind of the seat of, of that. Yeah, because mine says on mine, it just says sexuality and, and passion. So um, it makes sense that it would be in and around, well, women's ovaries, essentially. Um, and then the essential oil is um, ylang ylang, which I love the smell of but I actually am not familiar with that oil per se. So oh, um, I so would have to look more into it. Okay, see, and that's an oil that I have used. It's kind of my go-to oil, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of interesting. I used it, I began using it when I was pregnant, actually. Oh. And I didn't really think, I didn't know the connection there between kind of that chakra, um, but I knew it was very good for, um, calming and also kind of that pregnancy piece which makes sense right like again that fertility aspect of things yeah, ah, ding. yeah. yeah. so cool. then if you're craving that oil would that mean that that chakra is maybe needing a little bit more to keep yeah, going it, for sure um craving that oil or being attracted to an oil generally can mean yes that i need that one um and it's interesting I haven't really used it since since my babies have been born like I so it makes sense yes when I was pregnant I was using that daily I would um, when I was in labor with our youngest I had it in the bath right like it was when I was in labor um, so yeah okay so yeah that makes sense that you're what's that I said it's interesting to know that like when you start putting pieces together that you mm. thought was just happenstance yeah, just because I liked it, but no, it's, there is no coincidence, but yeah, that's, oh, thanks universe, that was, that was good on her part. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, that one's orange, and then the solar plexus. Um, so that's right, kind of, move my camera, kind of right below your breastbone there. Yeah, right there, yeah. And that one um, is yellow, right? Correct. Okay, yeah. and I'm going to get you to talk about what it does. Sure. Okay, so that's the the power one, um, and it's not kind of that dominating, but it's feeling confident. It's feeling in charge of your day and inner power. Um, so when we wake up, we feel like, I've got this. I'm feeling really strong. I'm feeling really good about um, the decisions I'm making. That's also kind of that gut feeling that we talk about sits in there. When we are in our inner power, we we definitely can step into that kind of gut feeling and just know that something is right. Um, so yeah, that one is yeah yellow in color, spinning disc, 
And when, for a lot of people, myself included, when I'm feeling anxious, that's where it sits. Yeah. So anxiety can often sit there and you can't feel anxious and powerful at the same time. So right. when you're feeling anxious, that one can be closed up because you're not going to feel very confident and strong and good about your day, but also like jittery and I don't even know if I should get groceries right now kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so um, is that the one, I know for me, that one, we really struggled to try and get that one going a lot more mm -hmm. when I was struggling. Um, mm -hmm. Is that the case for most people is that you find the solar plexus, that one seems to be the one that takes on the brunt of um, crap. It, it holds a lot in there. Um, and especially for, so everybody kind of holds, for me the and for you, the solar plexus, like that's kind of one of the ones that we close up. We all have places where we have a familiarity and a comfort so some just close right up that's our first just based on our soul's mission and past lives or whatever you believe but for me that is whereas some people it's throat chakra some people just like can't speak their truth that's what closes up first so it just kind of depends on the person and your soul like for you and i so like the throat chakra She's wide open all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas there's other people that's, you know, closes right up. Same with that intuition piece. Some people have it just naturally open, but it all just, I would say solar plexus can often be closed because anxiety is a huge thing that I see with clients anyways. So yes, I would say I see a lot of it, but it's, everybody holds it in different spots. So. Okay. And the essential oil for that one is cinnamon, which we learned you and I, the last time we were talking about it was cinnamon's really good for digestion and getting things moving. So it, at first you and I couldn't figure out why it would be cinnamon of all things, why cinnamon would be that one. And then we kind of put together that it actually makes the most sense because of the digestion part. So it's Absolutely. quite interesting to see the difference. Um, the next chakra is our heart chakra, which is green. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, go ahead. Talk about All it. All right. So heart chakra is love. It represents love. But it's not only just kind of love. It's giving love, receiving love, and a huge piece that with um, a lot of people, is that self-love piece that is often kind of missing or just taking a step back. It's not missing, but um, for a lot of the women in our lives and just people who generally step back and put others first, big heart chakra, but putting themselves last, they're just missing, they're, there's kind of that three-way balance of like give, right. receive, self. And many of us focus on that giving and receiving, um, whereas this other piece kind of like we hold it back here and it needs to come to the forefront, knowing that by loving myself, I'm not taking love from anybody else. Um, so yeah, that's the, the heart chakra. The essential oil is rose, which kind of makes sense. Heart, rose, romance, love all mm -hmm. intertwined um the next chakra is the throat chakra that ashley said we typically are quite open on our throat chakras but that doesn't mean mm -hmm. that it hasn't been closed before um for sure and it's blue which yes. is kind of interesting but go ahead and talk about those aspects Sure. So the throat chakra is, like you said, blue, and it represents speaking our truth. So saying what we need to say to the people we need to say it to. And we've all had closed throat chakras because there's times when there's something we need to say, but we just can't, or we just don't feel like it's worth it. Or some people are naturally have, have difficulty with that, just people pleaser. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I don't, I want to do whatever 
whatever I'm supposed to do, I want to keep the peace. Um, so that part often can suffer. And when we see something happening that we don't agree with, that's where kind of that blockage, it'll just build up, build up, build up, build up. And I've actually seen it create disease because of the buildup that's there. So, mm -hmm. and then too, with the, with the throat chakra and as with any, so you had said, if you feel, if you're scared to speak your truth, cause you don't want to hurt people's feelings that can then segue into the heart chakra too, right? Mm -hmm. Because if your heart chakra is not working at its full capacity, then it would then could, I guess, make your throat chakra say, well, no, just don't say anything at all. Whereas if everything's mm -hmm. open and running, then you probably would have the confidence because you're grounded to say what you need to say with love and understanding. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, and so that's exactly, that's the whole point. Everything needs to be in alignment, in balance, so that one chakra isn't kind of leading and the others are waning when that's exactly like you said when they're in balance yes if you feel grounded and you feel confident and strong you're going to approach the conversation with love in your heart and following your intuition while connected to your higher self right like if we can have all of that in alignment regardless of what comes at us whatever life situation whatever conversation or confrontation if we are in alignment those pieces will um will flow will do their job too right like mm -hmm. it'll, yeah okay and so and that oil is eucalyptus which would make sense because in vix and in all of that like anything if you have a sore throat you use mm -hmm. eucalyptus to soothe it so it would make sense that that would balance off. Um, our next one is the third eye, and um, it's indigo, which is, <laughs> we talked about this before, it's like a purpley blue, but more purple, yeah. <laughs> still kind it's of It's kind blue. of like that in between color, between <laughs> like throat chakra and the, the yeah. crown chakra, and it's just, yeah. yeah, it's, to me, indigo looks like a different thing, but I, I have learned what the color indigo is now. So, okay. so what is the third eye chakra? What does it? So that's intuition. So when we do something with a knowingness, um, and it's not rationale, it's a knowingness of just, this is right. I know it's right. And we don't overthink it. That's intuition. Many of us have heard mother's intuition. Like you take your kid to the to the hospital and everybody says like, oh, he's okay, he's okay, he's okay. And you're like, no, I know something's not right. And by the time you go to that fourth doctor, they're like, oh my gosh, right? Like that's, that's what intuition looks like. It can be very prominent with that mother's intuition, but we all have it and we all have, if we are tuned into it, if it's open, we, yeah, we can live life very intuitively. Um, and that's our, it's our higher self knowing what is best, I guess, is the best way to explain that. It's not our brain going, if I do this, then it's this, then it's this, then it's this. It's just a, nope, this is what it is. Right. I'm good with that. Okay. And then, so on my sheet, it says that it's also more, um, like I, I'm assuming it's for some people because it, like a lot of people do have a like good intuition, but then there are some people mm -hmm. that are then the next level of intuition. So they right. feel um, things on a different different level, um, mm -hmm. and they it's that psychic ability, but not necessarily yeah. foreseeing the future. It's more um, for me. It's usually in animals. Um, if I see a, a butterfly or something or something seems, it, it kind of just pops out and that mm -hmm. I can instantly just go, oh, that's so-and-so. And people are like, what are you talking about? It's like, I honestly, I don't know, but I do know that this is, this is what it is. As long as I don't overthink it, as soon as you start exactly. to overthink it, then it becomes mm -hmm. a different chakra altogether because you're not mm -hmm. thinking instant. 
So exactly. um, that's what I tell a lot of people if they find the dimes or the feathers or something Absolutely. that reminds them of somebody on the other side, it's the initial person that comes yeah. to your mind. Don't think that okay. it's going to be grandpa because you really want it to be grandpa. It could be somebody completely different. And that's the one that you have to believe it is. Yeah, so yeah, for sure. Um, and the thing, sorry, the thing with intuition is as soon as we, as soon as we start to overthink it, we can talk ourselves out of it, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, well, you know, that's a coincidence. Oh, that's, but that's our, that's our brain going, trying to convince, trying to create a rationale to it versus just, Nope. I know that that's who it is. I know what that is and moving past it. Just like, yep, that's it. And, yep. and the essential oil for that one is lavender, which is funny because it's my favorite um, mm -hmm. oil, but I guess we still couldn't quite figure out what lavender had to do with third eye, but we're going to trust that there's something there that we don't maybe know about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they say it's lavender. We're going to go with that. Um, we'll go with it. Um, and that gets us, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say lavender is kind of one of those essential oils that is an overarching, really great oil. You can use it for anything. And like our intuition, if it's on, it's, you can use it all the time, right? Yeah. It's, it's right there for you. Um, that makes so, sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that gives us to our final chakra, which is the crown chakra. Mm -hmm. um, and it is violet. And we had a hard time with this essential oil. And I meant to look it up. I think it's frankincense. No, that's the incense. The oil oh, okay. is M-Y-R. Oh. oh, no, it's that one is myrrh. It was something else. Oh, we, myrrh. So yes, myrrh. Okay. Which then we'll go with frankincense. So the crown chakra does. The crown chakra is your connection to the higher, you can call it higher self, higher power, God, universe, whatever you name it. That, don't get stuck on the name. Um, it's that higher divine piece. And so when we think of that tree, I call it the apples. That tree We've got our roots, we've got our trunk, we move all the way up. The entire point of this apple tree, let's say, is to have apples. And when a tree who is an apple tree has apples, it's serving its purpose. And that's what we all want to be doing is serving our purpose in this lifetime. And when we are connected to our highest self, that's what we're doing. Okay. And people, See, and like, I, look at the, I look at the crown one as like a funnel and it's just- yeah soaking yes. all of the stuff up in there and it's bringing it down and then it starts it, it goes the opposite so if I'm, i needed to be grounded i need to ground first but i'm not going to ground without any source of power so it's like exactly it's the power source for for me and i don't know if that's like that for everybody but for me yeah. the sun is a huge um Absolutely. power source for me and mm -hmm. that kind of i just vision a beam coming in and just going right into here and absolutely and that's why so people who are very intuitive and very open-minded so when people, we say like oh she's so open-minded literally like you can have a crown chakra like this or you can have it like this right so you want to and that's where having all of your chakras doing what they're supposed to be doing because what can happen and Jen, you've probably experienced this. I have experienced this where you're so tuned in up here. It's like, you're kind of just flying around. Right. And you're kind of like, Whoa, I need to like, whew, need yeah. to come back down to earth. Yeah. And that's that grounding piece where there's, yeah, this one might be wide open, but it's not in balance. And it's not going it. anywhere. So it's just getting bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger like a balloon. And then it usually <laughs> explodes in a very yeah. messy, intense <laughs> shape. <laughs> so I don't know if you can hear my youngest giggling in the background. I can. Yeah. <laughs> I like. <laughs> Mom's pretty funny, hey? All right. So yeah. And like yeah, the essential oil there. was myrrh, um, which I wonder... I'm going to say it's got to have something to do, um, and I am so not the person to talk to about it, but 
um, something to do with the Bible or religion because it was frankincense and myrrh and something else. That's, that's the gold, frankincense and myrrh. That's what came to my head. I was like, oh, it's king's oil, yeah. right? Like so you think of like crown, yep, king's oil. Mm -hmm. So makes sense to me. And I would yeah, think that, that would. Yeah. Oh, it's a cool connection. Yeah. So what Ashley and I were talking about before is that we, if our viewers want to see it, we will focus on each chakra individually in a different video. Um, and we will go down to like, we will show you where it is. Um, we'll talk more about the oils. We'll talk about the crystals that are involved with it, the incense, and we'll get a little bit more in depth on how you can maybe possibly get it moving on your own or what it feels like if it's not working the way it needs to. So really just, yeah, diving into each one and kind of going into a lot more detail versus this was a really overview. Yes. Brief overview. Okay. So, um, if you have any questions, feel free to jump into the comments. This will be on Ashley's page as well as mine. And um, we look forward to hearing from you and seeing what you guys have to say. If you have a different idea or view, um, or you've learned something different, by all means, mm -hmm. this is what this is about, is learning and, and learning every day about what things work and what don't sure yeah all right absolutely if you have something to add we'd love to hear from you absolutely okay right. thanks everybody thanks bye okay bye